Hi grade 11s. Okay, so we are going to keep this video short, very, very short, five minutes and under. I'm going to explain the hyperbola. Okay, what you guys already know from grade 10 is that a hyperbola looks like this. It has two different arms or legs or whatever you want to call it in two different quadrants. Okay, you also learned from grade 10 that the formula looks like this without this p value. That's the grade 11 stuff, the new stuff. And you knew that this Q value over here is basically the asymptote. You heard that word before. If you haven't, an asymptote, the way I explain it to my learners is, you ever sat on the couch when you were young with your sibling and uh, you decided that I'm going to sit on my side, you're going to sit on your side with your younger sibling or maybe you older sibling, right? And the sibling, either it's you or the other one, that are the irritating one and they're going to come closer and closer and closer and closer to you. And they're going to tell you, um, you're going to complain and you say, oh, you're so irritating, you're in my face. And they're like, no, I'm not, I'm not even touching you. I might be really close to you, but I'm not touching you. You ever had that situation? That's basically what this asymptote is doing, okay? It's this graph coming really, 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 really close to this line over here, just never ever touching it. Okay, so this Q value over here, and this is important, this theory is very important. Okay, this Q value over here is our asymptote. Okay, it also tells us about shifting the graph up and down because the original graph, okay, has an asymptote on the y axis and an asymptote on the x axis, right? So this here, this line over here is y is equal to zero. If this value here is two, it means that this asymptote shifted up two units. If this asymptote here is negative 2, it means this asymptote shifted down 2 units, meaning that our whole entire graph also shifted up and down, okay, accordingly. So just remember this Q value over here, asymptote, and shifts the graph up and down. This P value over here, same thing, same concept as this, it's just the vertical asymptote, so the one like this, okay, the one that's going to pass through an X value, and so it's shifting the graph either left or right, that's what's happening. This A value over here, I see I'm on 2 minutes and 22 seconds, I need to speak a bit faster. This A value over here, okay, tells us in which quadrant we're going to be. If the A value is greater than 0, then it's going to be in quadrant 1 and in quadrant 3. If the A value is less than 0, meaning a negative number, then it's going to be um, in quadrant 2 and in quadrant 3. I already discussed the asymptotes with you. I am going to send this on the group, the grade 11 group for you guys so you can see all of this. Let's quickly talk about how to sketch because this is an important question that comes out in a paper where you have to know how to sketch a particular graph. The first thing you do, fill in your asymptotes. Okay, you draw dotted lines for that. Find your x-intercept, find your y-intercept, you plot that in, determine in which quadrant you're going to be, so either it's in 1 and 3 or 2 and 4, and then you can plot another two other points if you want to for yourself to get that perfect curve. Okay, let's do this quickly one example. Alright, I wrote down y is equal to 2 over x plus 2 plus 1. I feel like I'm going to go over my 5 minute mark, just bear with me, I promise I will not make this video very long. Okay. Cartesian plane, all right, can you see my asymptote here, my x1, all right, is at negative 2, so at negative 2, I'm going to, okay, let's put negative 1, negative 2, remember in your paper or your test or whatever it is, when you're sketching this, you're going to draw it accurately, mine is not accurate, you're going to do it accurately, okay, meaning you're going to measure with your ruler 1 centimeter, 1 centimeter going this way and one line, one line, one line going that way, okay. Then this one over here says 1, so that means at 1, this here is at 1. This tells us it's going to be in quadrant, it's a positive number, so in this quadrant here and in this quadrant here. And now we need to find x and y intercepts. So x int is where y is equal to 0, 0 equals 2. I'm taking that over. I'm going to multiply both sides by x plus 2. All right, I'm dividing both sides by this negative 1. And I'm taking this over. All right, so that means x-intercept is at negative 4. So let's say negative 3. 
Ah, damn, there's my five minute mark. Almost done. Well, I hope I'm almost done. Y intercept where x is equal to zero. So y equals two over zero plus two plus one. This gives me two over two, which is one. One plus one is two. So let's go fill in my y intercept at two. We already said our graph is looking something like this. And something like that when we are marking for you where are we marking we're marking that you've got the correct asymptotes we've marked correct x and y intercept and correct shape meaning the same uh, the correct quadrants and that's it that's how you sketch it all right we're moving on to finding the equation all right this one here is quite easy when we say find the equation, what I want you to do is you fill in the asymptotes. We already discussed this is the p value, it's the asymptote, this is the asymptote. So you fill in the asymptotes into the place of p and q. You fill in one other coordinate p and you solve for a. All right, let's try that out. I'm just going to test one number and I'll show you what I mean. Um, Let's say I gave you a coordinate here somewhere. Let's say this was the sketch. We don't know this now, okay? Just for the purpose of my explanation. Let's say this value over here is 5 and 9 over 7. That's the coordinate here. And I want you to find the equation, okay? So how we word it, we're going to say write down the equation of f of x in the form a over x plus b plus q, not plus, minus b, sorry. Upside down, right up. So you go find the asymptotes. Now again, I'm repeating what I'm saying. This part is not given. This is just the sketch given. You take this equation, uh, this asymptotes line here. It's negative 2. You go fill it in over here. This is a over x plus 2. That's what I mean by filling in the asymptotes. You see this number over here, the y asymptote? It's at 1. You go fill it in over here at 1. Okay, this is y. And then you say we pass in through a point, And the point we pass in through is... I told you 5 and 9 over 7. All right, I set a very unrealistic um, goal for myself to finish in five minutes. 9 over 7, a over 5 plus 2 plus 1. And now we're just going to solve for a. All right, this means 9 over 7. It's going to give us 2, but I'm showing you minus the 1 multiplied by this is 5 plus 2 is 7 so multiplied by 7 see we get the answer 2 2 there a equals 2 and then you write down your equation f of x is 2 over x plus plus 2 that's what i mean by finding the equation let's recap quickly sub in the equations of the asymptotes into their places or the asymptote values into their places sub it through a particular point there's it. Solve for A and get your answer. Okay. Now we are going to talk about the domain and range quickly. The domain of a particular ooh, hyperbola. X is an element of all real numbers except the P value, which is the asymptote. And for the range, Y is an element of all real numbers except the Q value. All right. And that's all that we need to know about the hyperbola. Let me see. Oh, it's about write, rewriting the equation, but I'm not going to continue reading, uh, recording this in this video because I've made a separate video. If you just uh, look for this, the separate video on rewriting the equation of the hyperbola, you'll be able to see it there. Ah, I kept this under 10 minutes. 